G'day, I'm Graham Lorimer. I'm going to show you the inside story on greenhood orchids. During this pandemic, it's more important than ever that we are reminded about how nature keeps on going regardless of the things going on around us. Greenhood orchids are represented by about 250 species worldwide, mostly in Australia, but a few extending as far away as Indonesia and New Zealand and New Caledonia. In Victoria, there are about 82 species, and in Maroondah, where I come from, there are 11 surviving species. Not in Greenhood, Terrastylus nutans is the most common species in the outer eastern suburbs of Melbourne. Here's the flower of a nodding Greenhood orchid. It's distinguished from our other local Greenhood orchid flowers by being single at the top of the stem and having a flower that leans over. Like all orchid flowers, it has three sepals and three petals, but like many orchids, the petals and the sepals are rather hard to work out, or even to see that there are actually three of them. In this case, two of the sepals are the, the prongs that you see at the base there, oriented more or less horizontally, and the third one forms this hood over the top with the window in it, you'll see that you can see through it somewhat, so it acts as a bit of a window. Then the three petals include the uh, bit that you can see at the tip of my finger there, one on the other side, that makes two, and the third one is that U-shaped piece that sits down the bottom. And that U-shaped piece has a critical function. It exudes the sex scent of a female fungus gnat to which males of the species are attracted. Now I'm going to pull this apart a bit, and even although nodding greenhoods are the most common of our local greenhood orchids, you should never pick wild orchid flowers, or wildflowers in general for that matter. Um, orchids are not only the most uh, numerous species in any family of plants in the world, as well as being the largest number of species in Australia and in Victoria and in Maroondah, but they're also the most threatened of the groups of plants or families of plants on all of those spatial scales. So do not pick orchids from the wild. Um, but I'm going to show you how it works, and it's rather fascinating. Now, I'll have to do some dexterous manipulation here. Those two horns at the bottom, I'm going to pull apart. That's the two, what are called the lateral sepals. And uh, at the top here, you might be able to see that there is a little uh, bump through a window there. I'm now going to tear off one half of the hood at the top here. There we go. So now we can see inside the flower, and you can see the yellow, yellow of the pollen at the end of a structure called the stylus. Now with my trusty pencil, I'll point out the stylus. If I remove this petal off the side there, is one of the petals that I'm just leaning over, and you can see this structure in the middle of the flower. Okay, what we've got in the middle there is um, a stylus which has the female receptive part of the part that receives the pollen. That's called the stigma. And out on the tip of it here, we've got the pollen. And there is this clear colored part, which you can see forms a tunnel. And that tunnel is an important part of the, uh, the way the whole flower works. Now, what happens is you can see that that U-shaped um, part of the flower, the part called the labellum, has flopped back into the flower. And that happens whenever one of these fungus gnats, the male fungus gnats, is uh, when it's attracted to the flower, it uh, lands on there and this labellum flips up into the flower and the insect becomes um, a bit disoriented in this chamber here where the clear window is. And the poor sex-crazed gnat doesn't know quite what to do, 
uh, but it works out that it has to get out through this tunnel up through there. On the way out, if it had any pollen on its back, it would wipe it on this female part called the stigma. And you'll see why it might have pollen on its back in a minute. Now, on the way out, it has to go through this tunnel. And in fact, this tunnel is where the genus gets its name Pterostylus. The stylus I've already explained, and tero means winged. So it's got these wings to form the tunnel. So if an insect were to go through there like that, about where the tip of the pencil is at the moment, there's some gluey substance, which would then get wiped on the back of the fungus gnat. And last thing on the way out with the glue on the back of the fungus, it goes out through the end of the tunnel. And I now have the two pollinia or balls of pollen attached to the glue that's now on the tip of my pencil. The male insect, then goes off to another flower or to a female. And I think it's fascinating that over countless millennia, the species has not worked out that going to a flower of a green hood orchid is not going to give it any satisfaction. So we've got uh, a technique which is called sexual deception. The male of the insect, a fungus gnat in the case of this species, is attracted to the flower by the sex scent of a female fungus gnat that's simulated by the flower. The insect, which if it's been to a previous flower, will have pollen stuck on its back and that would then get wiped onto the stigma of the flower up inside there like that, and that would pollinate the flower. And as with all orchid flowers, the ovary where the seeds are produced is underneath the petals and the sepals. So if I fold all that up, the ovary is this part down here, uh, partly enclosed within a bract as it's called there. And once pollination has occurred and uh, fertilization uh, ensues, then DNA ends up going down into this ovary, seeds are produced, the ovary swells up and becomes a seed capsule. The seeds are then spread on the wind, they're like dust, as with all orchids. Then thousands of seeds from one capsule can be carried many kilometres on the wind. And then there's a whole other story about how they then germinate. Flowers of greenhood orchids might not be the most beautiful, but isn't that a fascinating story? And it's far from unusual in the orchid family, or in fact, amongst a whole range of our local flora. We should always remember that these fascinating aspects of nature are going on around us, as long as we let them. <laughs>